battle. You don't have to tell his long story. That's the best part. He just knows. You know? Yep. Yep. Straight to the point, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I think it has to be like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how we should be. That's how we yeah, should be. That's how it should be. Yeah. Maria, how is Sophia? She's fine. She's been on two weeks vacation with my mom. She'll be coming back now. Okay. Yeah. G, are you on? I'm on, please. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah. All right. We just want to make sure there is no other light that is interfering with what we are doing. All right. Um, I'm gonna have this other one right here by me. Okay. Eternal Holy Spirit, we welcome you during the second session of our journey with you during this year. Thank you that in the early calendar we can take a break in the middle and be able to work with you, but in the supernatural calendar we are still in the first session. What a wonderful God you are. We ask for your supernatural leadership. We ask for your supernatural leadership. So that the name of Jesus will be highly exalted. God the Father will be worshipped forever. Pour out upon us the spirit and the gift of worship and prayer. Give us the word with revelation that will bear fruits in our lives. We plead the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. We ask you to lead because you are the leader of the ministry of Jesus and of the business of God on the earth. Therefore, Holy Ghost, we ask you to lead because you are the leader. Amen. Pour upon us the gift of ministry unto the Lord and the gift of ministry unto humans. And the gift of ministering together with angels. We, we ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to continue straight on what we have been doing uh, for some time, sacrifice at the altar. This is the second part of this series. We want to continue until we finish everything that the Bible says about it and everything that is revealed to us concerning it.
First of all, I want to invite you to, to join me to celebrate my 28th year of anointing, 28th year of ministry, of doing God's business on the earth and in heaven. I started since I was younger than, than that. But I'm just talking about when humans ordained me. I am going to include this year, the years that I have been doing ministry before I even started in the church. So that is July 29, 2017. I am looking at what city I am going to be doing that celebration. I don't know yet. But please, you are invited to send in your congratulatory messages, your cards or gift to Idikai Mary P.O. Box 2491, Wichita, Kansas State 67201, USA. You can call to leave your congratulatory messages. If you have received a major breakthrough, even a small miracle through our prayers and ministration, please go to um, write us, send it to our PO box, or you use the prayer request uh, page on our website, idikaimeri.com, to, to, to write your testimony so that we can have it. We want to begin to compile it. If it's something that you are capable, you can record your voice if you want to. If you want to include your name, that's good. If you don't want to, that's good. If you have the ability to do that, you can record an audio of any major miracle or the benefit that you've received from my ministry and from my personal relationship with you, you can record it and you can send it to me, idikaimary2000, 2000 at gmail.com. Send it to me. We want to begin to catalog those things. If you have photos that you want to send to me of you and your children for me to, to put in, in my book of memorial to remember this year, and to remember my ministry on the earth, please do so. The beautiful thing, anything that you think will remind me of my relationship with you, please do send it. Do send it, whether it be a picture, whether it be a gift, whether it be a card, whether it be a poetry, whether it be a song, do send it. Do send it. All right. I want you to take this very seriously. Um, Nancy and I, we are looking at uh, whether we should bring uh, the destiny activation service or conference to New York City. We have found a hotel where we will do that people can come to New York City in Manhattan to um, uh, for me to minister to them either one on one or as a family, or as a group, or as a church, as a church group. So those of you in the New York City, the New York, Brooklyn, Bronx, all those area, Staten Island, Buffalo, those of you in the New York area, I'm going to make this announcement again. Please let us know that you are coming. We are going to post something on the website to, to see whether how many people are coming. If we don't have the numbers we want, we'll pull it. We'll pull it. So those of you in the New Jersey, Philadelphia, Maryland, Virginia, those, those areas, 
We've not yet put it together as to how many days, but we are thinking of having something on the weekend, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, down there in, down in Chinatown. It's around Chinatown in New York City. So I want to know those of you who will want to come to that service, bring sick people, bring sick people, bring people who have needs. Whenever you hear that I am bringing, what do we call it? Whenever you hear that I am bringing the destiny activation service, know that your destiny is to be activated. Those services are not free, they are paid services. We have not yet even put a price on how much it will cost for people to see me. But it's gonna be a blast. So we want to put that service around, we want to put that service around August. So please pray, let's see what happens. If we don't have enough people, we'll pull that service and we will take that service to a different city that will be ready for us. Please, if you want me to bring the Destiny Activation Service to your city, do call and let me know. Bring people, tell people about it. It's, it costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of time to do those, this kind of stuff. It's not a joke. And you don't even talk about the fasting and prayer, the price to be paid for such things. All right, let's go on for tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is destiny activation? What is destiny activation? The Holy Spirit began to talk to me about activating people's destiny. <laughs> because many people, their destiny has not yet been activated. I spent a long time in the presence of the Holy Ghost and I was being told most things that I need to know about destiny and how it is activated. For Joseph, it came through a dream. For Jacob, it came through a blessing from his father and mother. It also came through dreams, visitation by angels, and by the Lord Most High. Other people answered the call, like Esther. Her destiny was activated by the guy that was in charge of preparing the eunuchs. Um, preparing the women, the eunuch that prepared the women for the king. I'm just explaining what it is. For Elisha, Elijah has to hit him with his cloak. And Elijah also dropped his anointed covering, his cloth, when he was going up to heaven, when he was being carried into the heavenlies. So there are so many ways of activating your destiny. Or does it come through a word spoken into your life? Like when the Almighty God spoke into our forefather Abraham. His destiny was activated. Hallelujah. Someone like David, 
His destiny was activated through the anointing with oil. The same thing with Solomon. All the great kings got oil poured on their head. Others, the word was spoken into them, and that word entered into their life, into their physical body, spirit, mind, and body. Many of you are suffering pretty much because your destiny has not yet been activated. Or you are in the wrong location because, see, when once your destiny is activated, you will begin to move into the real location. Some people wait a lot of time where they shouldn't be. Others waste a lot of time with people that they have no business being with. You see, David got his destiny activated and he stopped taking care of the animals in the bush and he now became a musician in the court, in the palace of the king. Because when once your destiny is activated, you will not relate with everybody. You see, like myself, I don't just, I'm not answering phone like I used to answer before because I've been told. I'm royalty. I am a principality of heaven on the earth. I can no longer be treated just like anybody just walk in and call me. No, 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 no. If you call, I will direct you to go to our website and look at the specialized services, choose a service, pay for it, and then call me. Why? Because God told me that what he has given to me, you cannot attach a price to it. So if you want to call me for me to activate your destiny, you pay for it. It costs, it costs for those without, I, I don't know how to even say it, but from what we were looking at, it costs, uh, I think it's a thousand dollars. Because this is a one-time thing. Mary, is it between five hundred and a thousand dollars? Is that is that what it is? Yeah, it's thousand. A thousand dollars, okay. But for those who don't have, who don't really have a lot of money, but you want to do it, we will be able to agree to come down to five hundred. Mary, is that not true? G, are you on the line? Yes, I, I'm on mute. Yes, please. Okay. You don't need to. We are not hearing any noise around you. Because there are some of you, when you see a $1,000, you will say, oh, I don't have that, but I have 500 But this is a lifetime thing, one-time thing that is done once. And then you receive the, um, uh, what do we call it? You receive your destiny. There are people who don't even know their destiny. This is not a joke. I asked uh, I asked Lizzie the other day, and I'm gonna ask all of you so that you you know this. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Matthew was a tax collector. Am I right? Is that isn't that what the Bible says? <laughs> Matthew was a tax collector. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Both of them were rich men. Why is it that Jesus did not give any of them, those in the financial field, or in the banking business, or in the money business, why didn't Jesus give any of them the, the, um, the post of being the treasurer or the banker of their business, of the business of Jesus on the earth. Why wasn't it given to, to them? Those who knows how to count money, knows how to handle money, were not thieves. They went to university to study about how to handle money. 
Why is it that Jesus did not give them the post of being the people in charge of money? Can anybody tell me? He said he gave it to Judas, who was a thief. Who was taking some of the money to help himself and his family. <laughs> and then betrayed Jesus for money. Because even though Zacchaeus and Matthew, Levi, were in the financial field, that wasn't their destiny. Because when you look at the life of Matthew, you see Matthew who used to be a financial person, a banker, a tax person. You see Matthew writing the gospel. He wrote the gospel according to Matthew, an original document of the Christian faith. So he was actually a writer, not a banker. Look at that. And when, when, when Jesus visited the house of Zacchaeus, we can learn from what happened between Jesus and Zacchaeus, who, what the destiny of Zacchaeus really was about. Because we never hear of Zacchaeus anymore after Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house and they ate. A lot of Zacchaeus threw a party for Jesus. From what we saw, and Zacchaeus also said that if he has taken money, if he has taken money that does not, did I turn that thing on? I hope so. No, no, no. What is it? Hmm. I think I might have. Okay, let's continue. Um. I just want to make sure that I did. Okay. Zacchaeus said that if he has defrauded anybody, he will pay it back seven times. We can see from there the real destiny, the real thing Zacchaeus is programmed was made to do. A man of conscience, a man who repent easily, a man who threw a party for Jesus. We can see a different thing about Zacchaeus. Jesus is very concerned about people. He is very concerned about people. And he wants me to go from city to city. Or while I'm in the office here, people should call to get their destiny activated. But it's not free, please. I was talking to heaven and they said to me, you have paid enough. You've made enough sacrifices. Not many pastors are doing what you're doing. You're ministering to people for free. But remember that this is now your full-time job. Ministry is what you were called to do. So those who come to seek me through you shall pay you for it. That's what heaven told me. So we have, uh, Mary and I, we sat down yesterday to put together some more things which we will put on the specialized services tonight, which is, um, we will have uh, a, a, a package for members. There are people we call covenant partners, and they are also those we call members of our ministry, ministry members. Those are people who pay their tithes, who donate on a regular basis, hundredfold people who are who are supporting what I'm doing on a regular basis, maybe every two weeks, every month. Those are our ministry members. 
then there are those who paid a thousand dollars to be to be in the, the millionaire 500 has been moved and so everyone in the millionaire 500 are now members of what we call uh, covenant partners club we will we will make videos some short short videos to explain each of these things so that everybody's aware of what has happened because we are starting very clean the way we want to handle all these things so that it's easier for me and easier for everybody some of the reasons why someone could be on their job for a very long time could be on their job for a long time you work for so many years you retired and still there is nothing to really show that you've spent that many years for a particular company or for government, nothing really to show for it, except the pension, the social security, all that, all those little, little benefits. But to say that you have about $200,000 in your bank account, none. To say that you have some investments that is bringing in money every day or every other day or every week, something, or every month, nothing. And many a time these things happen because these things happen because you have not yet entered into your destiny. Your destiny has not yet been activated. I'm going to give you an example here. Abraham was 75 years old when God told him to leave his country, leave his father's house, leave them alone and go to the land that he will show him. So at the age of 75, all the things that Abraham was doing, he thought that he has finished his job as a man, he got married and all of that. He has not yet even entered into his destiny. Not yet. So if this is the way the Holy Ghost want to go, I wanted to continue the sacrifice on the altar. If the Holy Ghost want to go on this, on, on the destiny activation, then we will go on that. But this will be the introduction. Because I am, I am being obedient. I prayed and I thought we are going to continue on the sacrifice on the altar, but it seemed to me like we are going more on, uh, on what he just discussed with me a few days ago. And, and Mary, I did discuss those things with you. Was it last night? Yes, please. Yeah, I think it was last night we discussed that. This, this subject is practical and very important to God. Because the kingdom of God will not prosper, will not have power, will not have effect on the human race, unless your destiny is activated so that you can play a part in it. So we are going to begin to look at the destiny of different people and how we are going to look at destiny itself and how each person's destiny was activated. Please, when you see the, the broadcast comes up in the internet, watch it, because by the time you know it, it will be gone. A lot of people can, you can have a job, you can go to university and be trained for something, but that might have little or nothing to do with your destiny. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you are going to need, you are going to need to, 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 to really know. I am going to activate your destiny. That's what I've been told to do. I'm going to activate it. One way or the other, you and I, we are going to cross path. And God going to use me as a prophet to activate your destiny.
So everything that Abraham did was not really much. But he thought that, well, he has done his best. And he didn't know that he has not yet even started. Moses was in his 80s when God came to him and activated his destiny through an angel. So I, I want you to begin to see because many of you, because of your age, you begin to really think that you, you've done, you are done. You begin to think that you are done. That's not how it works. You are going to be moved into your purpose on the earth. And you must fulfill what you were designed to fulfill on the earth before you leave this earth. If a man who is 75 years old, a man who was 80 years old, that's Moses and Abraham. Zechariah, who knows how old he was when he brought John the Baptist about. I want you to be aware of this. And we are also going to talk about how, who are the people that have been put aside for you to be connected to your destiny. Because you can never progress on the earth until your destiny is activated. And you have to take this thing very, very serious. This also includes the destiny of nations. There are some people who make the mistake and they will say, okay, Idikai Mary, Idikai Mary gave me a, a prophecy. It did not come to pass. And those people are stupid because they do not know how prophecy works with destiny. Some people do not know that when a prophecy is given to you, God is giving you a prophecy so that you can go to work. Prophecy is a tool for you to use to succeed in life. Prophecy is not God telling you that he is going to, he is going to come physically to come and begin to do certain things for you. Prophecy is God showing you what you are capable of becoming. What if you play your game well, this is how it will turn out. Because that's the way God wants it to turn out. And some people do not know, some people do not know how to go about some legal issues Legal issues required strict legal um, ability to know these things. You want to go into business. Do you have the business technical know-how? Do you have the right people to guide you? Or you just receive a prophecy that you should be a businesswoman or a businessman, and then you go and start something that... You don't even have physical training. Why is it that God, instead of Moses going straight to be a savior, God allowed him to gather experience until he was 80, Abraham until he was 75? David did not just, David's, David's destiny was activated, but he never even went into the throne. He never sat on the throne, even after his destiny was activated. It took many years until Saul died before he went into it. Some people were trying to make mad with me about how did the, uh, Hillary was supposed to be the president, how did the Donald Trump become? You think that you think that God God is like devil that will come to force people to do what people don't want to do, he forced them. God is not like that. That's the God you have in, in Islam and in Hinduism and all this other religion. Not Christianity and, uh, and Judaism. Our God is not like that. 
God will give you a prophecy, but it depends on you people to choose what you want. He will tell you, this is the right person. But you go ahead and choose the wrong person. That's your problem. And then you say, yeah, that prophecy did not come to pass. Are you serious? And not only that, let me tell each and every one of you. Donald Trump is going to punish America. He's going to beat your butts. After he has finished with this country, this country will learn a lesson to become like Europe, a thinking country, not a feeling country. Because you ask an American, what do you think about it? They tell, well, I feel or I believe. You ask European, they tell you, I think. When he will finish with this country and things will break down to zero, that's when this country will learn a lesson. <laughs> we thought that this was a joke. Some people went ahead to say it was God. It was God that put Donald Trump in the White House. Let me tell you this. And the almighty God who made the heavens and the earth is my witness. God never chose Donald Trump to be the president of the United States. God has nothing to do with it. And woe be any human being, curse be any human being, who go about telling other human beings that it was God that chose him. God has nothing absolutely to do with the election of last year. I put out a video, I put out a broadcast, whereby it was a big warning what was going to happen. And then when you even start looking at the record of Hillary, you will see the carelessness, you will see the carelessness of Democrats, you will see that Democrats are not even proactive. They are not proactive. When something happened, they don't make no noise. They don't look at the, the, the loophole. Obama was there when the, when the Republicans asked, asked Hillary Clinton to come to the, to the Hill to come and testify about Benghazi, about email, all those. And he never used executive privilege to say, no, she cannot go. She cannot do that. And yet look at Trump. He's smarter than he. Because he look at all the loopholes of the laws and government and uses it. One thing about Republicans, you give Republicans power, they know how to use power. You give Democrats power, they don't know how to use it. They start playing with it and toying with it. And are afraid of Republicans. Give power to Republicans, they know how to use it to the utmost. If a Democrat was was uh, was uh, was Trump, hmm, just one thing that Trump said or did, they will start impeachment. I'm serious. And not only that, why do I blame Republicans for the problem of America? No, we should blame everybody for it. There is a prophecy that will come during during this seven year during this seven days conference. There will be a day for prophecy. It's a warning for America. Because as long as Democrat and Republican and Republican and Democrat continue to wage war against each other and wage war against this country, they will destroy this country. If they cannot work together to solve the problem of this nation. You're going to see what's going to happen. And of course, America is at the bottom of the ladder in education, in, in health, in, 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 in child welfare, in everything. And we think this is a joke. We are still singing. We want to celebrate July the 4th. Not me. I'm not celebrating it. Because America is under strong and heavy curse. Strong and heavy judgment. God has turned his back on this nation. Nobody can tell you any prophecy they went and received in heaven. God will punish them for going to whichever planet, not heaven, where I go to, to go and bring, to go and bring a, a what is it, 
uh, uh, prophecies to come and be aligned to people and vision about how this nation will prosper and how things are great and good and all of that. We are the number one country in the world. It's a lie. We are not. going to take a long years for us to return back to where we used to be. It's going to take many years. Because this nation has put its finger on the face of God. And so God is saying, okay, do your own thing and see how it's going to look like. And we have had enough false prophets from the churches lying to us over the years. My job is to activate your destiny so that you can move to your location of prosperity. Please write this down, Annie. When your destiny is activated, that is the only time that you can move into your place of prosperity. And you will never live in confusion. I'm not saying that there will be no warfare, but it will be easy for you to overcome anything. There's not anybody that can activate your destiny. These things are no joke. These are serious business. Because many people are leaving this earth, going to hell, going to heaven, without even walking into what they were programmed to do on the earth. So that's what I'll be doing from now on. Those days are over that you can just pick your phone from anywhere and call me and want to chat with me. I won't pick my phone. Only those who are members who are paying their tithes and donations to my ministry, only those who are covenant partners, only those who are into some other things we are doing in the ministry can get a hold of me. Outside that, no. It's not allowed. Even heaven told me don't allow it. Because people have taken advantage of you for so long. And they've given me a different job to do. So when I'm not ministering to people physically on the phone. They've given me another job that I'm doing. They've given me a job that I'll be doing right here in my office for them. Now let me share something with you so that it will be easier for us. We are looking for people who are going to designate certain sum of money to support what I'm doing. You're looking for them. If you are one of those, you write to me and tell me how much you'll be comfortable of sending each month or every week or every two weeks. We need to know. Because I need to have a list of those who are supporting me and supporting my ministry because those are the people I'm going to be talking to. Those are the people that I'm going to be praying for. My covenant partners, those are the people I want to focus on. Covenant partners also in, in me, those who are who also are aspiring to become millionaires. They are, they, are, they are in the partners club. And then the members, ministry members. And then those who are involved in hundredfold, etc. And other specialized services in there. Those are the people that I want to focus on, not everybody. so that I can give you quality service. I want to focus on somebody like Jay from Virginia. Jay, are you there? Okay, she's not there. People like Lee of Australia, and Dorothy, and Mary, and Ladry, and Lizzie, and Ruby. So many of you. But please, if you really want to follow, you want to come under my covering. 
you want the sacrifices I'm sacrificing to be what pours out into you and blesses you and your family. Then you have to support what I'm doing. Because nothing is free in the world. That's just the way it is. But the most important thing that I want to see happen to you, I want to see your destiny activated. I will begin to call people and people will begin to call me and I will begin to, to descend through the gift that has been given to me during these weeks that we have not been on, on the air. I'll be able to descend to know whether your destiny has been activated or not. There are people who just want to play along. They do not know that there is a price to pay for destiny. There are people who do not want to be told what to do. They don't want anybody to tell them anything. But you want to be part of my ministry and my life. You are not allowed. Because when the Holy Spirit tells me to tell you what you are to do, this is your destiny, then you are going to go for it. If he says you should go to university and go and become a lawyer so as to become a judge, then you go. I want to focus on someone like Matthias. I told him, go and become an electrical technician. And he's into it. Others want to tell me stories. And that's not fair. Let me tell you, it's not going to work that you are looking for people who will accept you the way you are. No. You must have something that you are bringing to the bargaining chip. That's why many of you, your marriages do not work. Because your husband has nothing that they have brought to the marriage. Or you yourself have nothing that you brought to the marriage except have children, have sex, cook a meal, do laundry. Except that's what both of you agreed, that you are to be a full-time housewife doing that. Okay, that's a professional skill. But outside that, if the man is a businessman or the woman is a businesswoman, the other spouse must better bring, bring a professional gift, a talent, to the table. If not, it's not going to work. Paul was on his way to Damascus. All along, he thought that his destiny was in the life of being a Pharisee. Those who know the scriptures and interpret it several ways. Who follow strictly the laws of Moses and persecuted others who deviated from it. And Jesus saw in him that he was outside his destiny. And he went and stopped him on his way to Damascus. He stopped him and said, listen. This is what you're, this is really what you were designed to do. Let me tell you, education alone is not going to give you money. I'm just letting you know. Education is a tool to help you to get money. Education is a tool to help your destiny. This is where we will stop for today. Tomorrow we will continue. There are some days during these seven days fasting and prayer, there will be some days that you will see more than one broadcast. Some days you will see three broadcasts, just as the Holy Spirit leads. Whether tonight the Holy Spirit is just leading me to talk about what I'm called to do, to activate destiny of people and nations on the earth, so be it. 
because it will be when when I start ministering, then I know where he's leading. Because it's not as simple as going to study the Bible and pray and fast and come out to speak to the crowd. That's not how this thing works. It doesn't work that way. It's different. In my own situation, it's different. I can prepare all I want to prepare, fast all I want to fast, pray all I want to pray, study the word all I want to study. When I come into his presence to minister either to him or to minister to human being, it's a different thing entirely. They can just switch it in a second. And I have no say about it. Please tell people about me and about our ministry, about what I'm doing in life. Send my broadcast to people. When other products begin to come out, buy them, send them to people. Let people know about these things. If you can gather people around your city, you can gather people, you will help us to have a destiny activation conference in your city, do let us know. Support us, we will come. It costs a lot of money to, to, to do these things. A lot of money. It's not, it's not a joke. We want to stop here for today. Please remember that the fasting and prayer is from 6 to 6 for those who are able. For those who have some uh, health reason, you can fast from 6 to 12 in the afternoon. From 6 in the morning till 12 in the afternoon. Remember that it will catch fire. I, I want to... I want to invite those of you who are able to come and share a midnight prayer with me tonight. Come and share a midnight prayer with me at 12 o'clock central time. 12 o'clock central time. I want you to come and share a midnight prayer for those of you who are capable of coming. It will also be shown on Ustream. Come and pray with me. Come and pray so that we prepare for the seven days of fasting and prayer. Come and pray with me at 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock Central Time, which is 1 o'clock for those of you in the East Coast, 1 in the morning today. This is Bishop Idikai Mary saying to you, remember, only the blessing of the Lord will make you rich, and he will not add any drama, any trouble to it. I want to thank you very much. Um, do, not, do not waste your time trying to type in IdikaiMaryMinistry.com and all of that. We have made it easy for you, for you to go to our website. Just type in idikaimeri.com and you will be on our website. And then go to specialized services and look at the services that we offer. Buy our product too. God Almighty be with you. And I will see you at 12 midnight today. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Thank you.